Health programs are core data users of data collected and analyzed in DHIS2. This session will address, firstly, why it is important that health programs are involved in the DHIS2 lifecycle, and secondly, the types of activities where health programs should be involved. Next, we will discuss the role of health program staff in DHIS2 development. So aside from the DHIS2 core team, there are several other actors that needs to be included in the design uh, testing and ongoing revisions of the DHIS2 systems. So health program staff, they're key subject matter experts in their field, as well as users of the data. And hence, they are very important to keep involved in the development of new programs. So as such, they should be included in a range of activities. They should be included in the design and implementation of DHS2 systems for their programs, and also given sufficient access and training to use DHS2 effectively to support their programs. And it's important that health program staff are given sufficient training to participate fully in this process. There are different ways of linking health programs and the DHS2 core team. So for example, it's very beneficial to facilitate linkages between health program staff and the core DHS2 team or the HMIS team to help ensure that the DHS2 system is configured to meet the program needs. So the health program staff are the ones that really know the program needs. Health program staff should also be included as users in the DHS2 system and get appropriate system training. So in other words, they should be a key user of the data coming out of DHS2 and they should really be knowledgeable about how to use the system. We do know, however, that health programs sometimes don't always have staff members with digital or DHS2 skills. And in this case, they might need to link up with someone with this knowledge to assist them. And uh, that, that, that's important to do. To summarize, health program staff are subject matter experts and can support the development of DHS2 programs by providing detailed input and guidance on the management of a disease in a specific country. So remember that the team that's developing a DHS2 program, they might not know, for example, tuberculosis in great detail, but the health program staff can help with this. They can also convey input from the end users. So health program staff can serve as mediators or facilitate access to end users to convey input from the end users. What do they really need in their day-to-day -day job? And this is very important to make user-friendly systems. And lastly, advocacy is also a very important activity in a DHS2 implementation. And here, health program staff play an important role. They can promote DHS2 as a useful tool in their community and they can promote it as a useful tool to decision makers, other stakeholders, and end users. Next, I will talk about some specific activities where health program staff should be involved. There are different ways you can get involved as health program staff in a DHS2 implementation. Firstly, health program staff should take part in requirements gathering. This means that they should help convey what the program really needs to do. What kind of data do they really need to uh, collect? And are there spe uh, specific things about the work practices of the health workers in this domain that the DHS2 team needs to be aware of? Health program staff should also be available throughout the configuration process for clarifications. There might be questions arising or along the way, and it's important that they're available to help the DHS2 team that's making the program to build the best possible results. It's good to have health program staff involved in testing. This way we can discover if there are bugs or misunderstandings in the configuration process that the program staff can see at once, knowing the field best. They also have an important role in giving input to development of training material and to do actual training of end users and to be available to end users. And this is also linked with advocacy again, you know, knowing the, the program well, they can also help market it or talk well about DHS2 for a certain program and really listen to end users if there is any problems. Lastly, I will talk about access to DHS2 for health program staff. So as said before, the health program staff are the key users of the data coming out of DHS2 for a particular program. So there are certain things a health program staff can do to get access to DHS2. Firstly, you need to get your own user or user accounts. In DHS2, it's possible to define different user roles. 
you can get in touch with a system administrator for this program to obtain the needed access levels. So explain what kind of access you need. And if you don't have what you need, talk to the system administrator. It's possible in DHS2 to build your own dashboards. So each user can customize the data visualizations to view and analyze information that is most relevant to them. And this can come in addition to standard dashboards. So you don't have to build your own dashboards, but it's a possibility for those having access to the data. It's really important that health program staff links up with the DHIS2 core team in the country to facilitate collaboration. Ideally, you should know each other, you should talk to each other, and this way it's easier to make changes if stuff isn't working or if programs aren't behaving as they should. So DHS2 health programs, they exist for use by those programs for program management, improvement of uh, patient care and of planning, policy making, et cetera. And as mentioned before, again, and, and just highlighting again, the actual use of DHS2 data and results by program staff is really a key to success. And at minimum, program staff should be involved in a monthly or quarterly data cleaning and review process. This way, they both get to know the program well, but they also get, an, get a feel of the quality of the data being collected. And ideally, they should be involved more than that, ideally in a day-to-day -day work, or at least have close contact with the DHIS2 core team. We know that a common issue is that people in programs often do not know about or do not have access to DHIS2 systems. So access can also be granted to high-level health program leaders and other external stakeholders using DHS2 access controls and tools to give key people visibility into the system without compromising system security. In summary, we can say that health program staff are key subject matter experts in their field, as well as key users of the data, and they should be included in DHS2 planning and use through both input on the design and implementation of DHIS2 systems. They should ensure that they have system access and training on the use of DHIS2 to support their programs. And they are important actors to advocate for use of DHIS2 with key stakeholders. <laughs>